Today we're going to be crafting a room full of dungeon shriekers. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here, and I'm back with another Building a Dungeon episode. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel for weekly inspiration. And now, let's get into that build. One thing that's really slowed down the dungeon build is cutting out each room one by one. Sometimes I can get a little bit confused figuring out which entrances go where and how wide to make each room. If you stick around through the whole video, you'll see an example of what I mean. So today, we just went ahead and cut out all the floor pieces of all the remaining rooms. I also cut out strips with the appropriate width and height for the rest of the remaining walls. This is a change up from the rest of the dungeon, but unfortunately, all the stores in my area stopped carrying the thinner polystyrene, so it was just going to be easier to assemble the walls in strips. Anyway, I do the usual pen engraving method to get a brick wall design. I'm not too specific with this, I just use my 1.4mm ballpoint pen to engrave brickwork patterns into all the walls. I do the same to the floor, and since this was once a room for priests to receive visitors, I make the tiles look a little fancier than the previous rooms. As usual with my builds, I get that stony look with my piece of road asphalt. You'll see here that I also added some cracks to some of the tiles and to the walls. I just did this by drawing them on with the ultra fine point sharpie that you see laying there. I just assembled all the walls with hot glue. I don't worry too much about the brickwork not lining up. If it doesn't look too good, we can fix it later. The important thing is that the walls look like bricks and not getting too burdened down by the details that won't make much difference in the end. Now we're going to make some dungeon shriekers with some milliput. Milliput is a two part epoxy that has a consistency similar to clay. When it dries you get a nice rock hard sculpt. It works a lot like green stuff if you've used that. It's also in general cheaper than green stuff. It is a lot stickier and has a more earthy feel where green stuff has a more plastic feel. At least that's my observation. They're both good to work with and I don't really prefer one over the other. I just use them for different things. I will have Amazon links in the description for you to purchase from. These links do give me a tiny bit of kickback with no extra cost to you. I really do appreciate when you purchase from those links as it does help support the channel a little bit. Also don't forget to click on the secret Amazon link. That's just a link to a product that could have really leveled up this build. To activate the milliput, mix two equal parts together with your hands, then mix and mix until the lump is a solid color and it's not marbled, and then you can start sculpting. In case you didn't know, dungeon shriekers are a type of mushroom found in the dungeons that scream when disturbed. They aren't directly a hazard, but they can definitely alert monsters from other rooms to the area. So the first thing we do today is sculpt the stems of our mushrooms. Then we do the caps. And to do this, I just make half circles and add texture to them with this texture maker that I made out of a bit of hot glue. I also add flanges to the bottom of the caps. All the pictures I've seen of Dungeon Shriekers have holes in the caps that sort of protrude from the surface. So first, we add little balls of milliput randomly all over. Then I use my sculpting tool to add deep holes in the center of all the balls. I make sure to dip my sculpting tool into water frequently because it prevents the milliput from sticking. I was super happy with the result. As you can see I also added a speckle of tiny holes to the shriekers. I just did that with the same sculpting tool. I then painted the whole room in my basic dungeon gray. And I decided I wanted the small tiles in the center of the room to be a lighter shade. So I painted those a light khaki color. I then painted random squares with light gray, a washed out pink, and yellow. Just to get a more interesting look to the room. Okay. 
I did a light dry brush of cream over the entire room. It kind of made some of the color tiles look ugly, so I touched them up a little and added a white highlight to those. I really wanted the middle tiles to stand out, so I used my ultra fine point sharpie to outline each square. Then I added a black ink wash to the whole piece, which was out of control and too dark, so I touched everything up a little with a tissue. And when it was dry, I did another white highlight to the inner tiles, just to brighten them up a little. And of course we have to add the black and yellow dank effect we mixed in earlier videos. And then, just a little touching up of black with the paint roller. If you've been getting some value out of the channel, then consider joining us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you will gain access to patron-only content such as extra footage and having more to say about the channel. Shout out to all my patrons, you guys really keep me motivated to keep on building. After assembling my shriekers, I attached some blue tack to the bottoms and added them to a board. I spray painted them with a lighter gray and they already look like either plastic or resin miniatures, which is way cool. Okay, I started this paint job out by overbrushing a coat of khaki over the mushrooms. I already had this on my palette so it was convenient. And in case you don't know, overbrushing is just brushing on paint in a way that it doesn't go into the creases and crevices of the miniature. That way, there's actually quite a bit of gray showing through. And I do a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Flat Red and Dark Skin and paint all the little screaming nodes on the shriekers. This makes a nice warmish washed out red that has excellent coverage. These are looking pretty cool already, but as with a lot of my projects, I wanted to add a little bit of color. So I'm going to add some blue violet to the inside of each node, the flanges under the cap of the shroom, and to some of the creases of the stem. This is kind of like shading and adding a bit of mystic look to the mushrooms as well. And we are going to be using olive green to add some more shading and patchiness to the shriekers. In all honesty, I mainly just added this color because it accented the other colors. I'm mainly doing light glazes of olive green. Also, adding this color locks in an effective and a little complex triad color scheme, which is basically just three colors on the color wheel that are equally spaced out. I then highlight each node with dark flesh. And rather than just dry brushing a highlight on, I build up the cream color in glazes. My brush is not full of paint and it is also not dry. I'm basically dragging watered down paint across the raised surfaces of the cap and the lower parts of the stem. We aren't finished with the video yet, but I wanted to do a quick comment shout out from the Dungeon Kitchen video. So here it is. Amy Z said, Big rooms are always fun to make, but filling them is the best part. All these tiny bits of flair are where the magic happens. Doesn't hurt that you're so good at it too. I agree, I love adding the tiny bits of flair to each room. It can really turn boring rooms into something that tells a story. Thanks a lot, Amy. And we're finishing up by gluing all the shrooms in place with some PVA glue. And I space them apart enough for the miniatures to maneuver, yet close enough that they will have to brush one to get through. Which of course will have a chance of triggering a shrieker. But that should make for a fun encounter. And of course, when I lined it up with the other tiles, I realized I didn't measure right. And yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier in the video. And of course, this is why I should have just measured out the whole thing at the beginning. So now, I think I'm going to adjust the entrance between the trophy room and the divination room. Just add a little extended entrance or hallway, I think. Then I won't have to adjust all the rooms that I just barely measured out. Anyway, if you made it to this part of the video, then let me know by commenting Screaming Shrooms, and I will heart your comment to let you know I've seen it. And now, continue the journey by clicking over the two links on the screen right now.